This week on Weekly Wonder, we're talking about the World Cup Finals. In fact, the richest World Cup Finals in history. We saw the usual thrills and spills, but nothing out of the ordinary, and no major surprises in terms of the competition. A lot of planks came down and some tricky short three and four stride lines, but overall, it was a wonderful week of sporting action. Last week, we covered the basic format and rules, but we wanted to give you some more in-depth information about qualifying and why this year's event was particularly unique from previous editions of the championships. We also heard directly from some of the athletes about this year's competition. Unfortunately, our major headline of the week was, of course, the tragic fatality of Jill Humphrey's chromatic BF, who sadly passed away just hours after competition ended on the second day. Jill finished on the podium in the jump-off class and would have been sitting in fifth overall heading into the final, but according to FEI protocols, an autopsy will be performed to determine whether foul play was involved or if chromatic succumbed to natural causes. Beyond the roller coaster of emotions from the sport itself, just before the start of the event last week, World of Show Jumping, one of our sport's main news sources, made headlines by announcing their decision not to cover the action. This decision was made primarily because of this year's choice in location, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. They cite an article from The Guardian as the logic behind their reasoning, which states, The international community must hold Saudi Arabia to account for its egregious human rights violations and not let sports washing and celebrity partnerships distract from what life is truly like for the kingdom's citizens. They also criticized the FEI board for choosing to allegate the finals to a country where women and LGBTQ plus people are subject to many discriminatory restrictions across different spheres of life. Certainly a worthy discussion and brings into question the FEI's criteria for choosing host cities for such events. Beyond the obvious concerns regarding safety of women and LGBTQ plus people, Riyadh is very far away and posed a significant challenge for horses and riders wanting to attend the event. It even made it particularly difficult for spectators to attend. An odd choice from the FBI, given the seemingly obvious need for our sport to gain more eyeballs and positive attention rather than detract from it. Our guess here at Horse Bites is that funding opportunity was a primary factor, but FEI made no comment on the matter other than to quietly double the prize money on offer from previous years as a subsequent incentive for athletes to attend. As far as this year's competition, the start list was quite varied. Unlike in the past where the World Cup Finals was a major stop for everyone at the top of the sport, this year followed a recent trend towards more unseasoned horses and riders with a number of factors playing a role. As we mentioned, Riyadh is very far away and an unwelcoming environment for many. It's an Olympic year and people clearly didn't prioritize the event, especially since the games are only three months out. More and more, we see a shift away from indoor events come April, and with both Europe and the U.S. boasting mostly outdoor events this time of year, it's a difficult thing to have to go back inside after having competed at either a Mediterranean tour or one in North America with big open-air arenas. And the big question remains, has the World Cup Finals overall lost its prestige? Only 34 athletes attended the championships this year, even though more are allowed to participate. 18 qualified from the Western European League, the strongest league by far, but interesting to note that at least five of the top 20 qualifiers opted not to go. The North American League allows seven from the East Coast, three from the West Coast, two from Canada, and two from Mexico, but perhaps most surprisingly, only five people from the U.S. attended, one from Canada and none from Mexico. And even more importantly, none of the top three qualifiers from the North American League opted to participate at all. The winner of the South African League automatically qualifies, but also opted not to attend, and the other leagues qualify athletes based on FEI discretion. A lot of the riders who attended were first-timers with very little international experience, let alone championship experience. And to be honest, we saw a lot of nine-year-old horses on the list as well, which was the minimum cutoff requirement. But overall, this certainly highlighted a lack of seasoned preparation of horses and riders who took part this year. We heard from a couple of riders who attended and ones who, one who opted not to about their thoughts on this year's event. Uh, I chose to go to Riyadh this year for World Cup finals because uh, Eddie Blue has always been a great horse indoors. He's had good success. Um, he was great in the fall indoors. He jumped two double clear rounds. He 
He was double clear at Washington in third. He was double clear in Lexington in third. Those World Cup qualifiers. On top of it, you know, sort of my plan building them up towards there. But on top of it, they uh, put up double the prize money this year, which was a nice incentive. So, and every class is run individually. Facilities wise, it's it's actually pretty great here. It's an expo hall. The hotel is right next to it. The main ring is it's pretty big. The warm up ring is huge. They have another ring and the lunge ring for riding. So. It's a lot of space for the horses and the stables are fully air conditioned. So you don't really feel like you're in, you know, a super hot climate or that the horses are having any issues with that in that sense of things. As far as the women um, and how, you know, people treat you and everything like that here, to be honest, it's 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 a pretty, you know, comfortable and safe feeling. I mean, everyone at the hotel is very friendly and there's I haven't noticed any huge difference really I, I haven't ventured out so much into the town or anything like that so that's a little bit hard for me to say but my experience here has been great so far i would like to have done the world cup finals but with uh, james can going outdoor and then going back indoor for just one show and then having to be organized the jump nations cup in rome it felt not the best plan and then for my other two horses at that level i just felt they weren't experienced enough to go to a world cup final maybe in a year's time it was certainly a contentious year, but we did see some top sport and a worthy winner.